So Apple has completely outdid themselves with this latest version of iOS 26. And after spending a couple of days now using this, here are 25 of my favorite features at Apple Integrated that others overlooked. Let's get started. And of course, I'll be sure to include the timestamps in the video description down below for your pleasure. But so let's start off with compatible devices. Apple did drop the iPhone XS as well as the XS Max. This new firmware update will only be compatible on the iPhone 11 or newer. And in terms of the official release date, Apple says it will be released sometime during fall. At the time making this video, we currently are on the developer beta and the public beta should be released sometime in July. Now with this beta update, we also received new features for the AirPods and so much more. So let's quickly start off with the quick rundown of everything you need to know. So the first one can be located in the Photos app. A massive complaint about the previous iOS 18 update was this weird column layout. Apple reversed it, so now you have access to a library which allows you to go back to like how it used to be when it was actually good. All your recently shot photos as well as like screenshots are now organized like how they previously used to be. So we could actually now finally go back and reverse back to the original layout. That's pretty neat. In addition to that, if I go ahead and select a, a photo that supports this, like here's my K9, if I click on her, on an iPhone 15 as well as 16 models, on the top over here, you have access to spatial scenes. By enabling spatial scenes, if you notice, the photo will actually move, giving it like almost a realistic look. And this can be utilized on the lock page as well. We all seen those like photos on Instagram, people would create and upload of it just stretching out and moving as if you're right there. Well, now that's available on photos for the iPhones. So if we lock our device and we go ahead and select that similar photo, actually, let's do a new photo. I guess I'll feature this one. Basically me being goofy and one of my friends having to took a picture. Notice how over here on the very bottom you have access to that same tool where you can enable it or disable it. And if we adjust the time and tap done, set as pair. Now we have this holographic looking photo that really does look pretty dope. You can use this for objects as well, not just people. Now Apple Intelligence also received some updates of its own. And one of the most useful ones is probably the ability to utilize whatever you see on your screen to ask Apple Intelligence some questions like what kind of product it is or if you have some questions on something you're trying to fix. You see the way this works, let's say for example we go on social media and we go ahead and screenshot something that we see on the screen like this uh, GMC pickup truck, right? There are now two tools on the very bottom. One, you could ask it questions like how, what's the EV range on this thing or what is this vehicle? Or you could use Google reverse image search. And you simply could just highlight the subject like so and it will simply bring up Google reverse image search and you could literally find the exact photo that user used and find out more information on what kind of vehicle that was. And just like that. And yeah, it took me to the correct vehicle that was indeed a GMC Denali. It just had, took me to my Facebook for some reason. Probably just a Facebook account that has that image, but you should get the picture. Now reversing back to my previous wallpaper, another cool thing I like a lot is when you hit customize, the time can now be adjusted to the size that you want. Continue to have that Apple like glass effect as well for its liquid glass. Even the strike sheet right here, you can pinch to crop. So that's pretty cool. While we select save, unlock our device, clear app icons. By simply going into wiggle mode and then tap edit and go into customize, you can select between tinted app icons as we previously had on iOS 18 or completely clear you can select between auto, light, or dark. Light is this one's more transparent. Dark is has a like a like has like a black tint. Clear in my opinion looks pretty good, especially with the combo with the correct wallpaper, which I'll have this one link in the description down below. But the thing that a lot of people felt to mention and realize is the control center is pretty clear. A lot of people don't like that. A lot of people wish it was blurry. Same goes for this window over here for your notifications as well. And notice if you look closely, look at the detail right there. It definitely looks like I'm like scrolling down with like a block of ice or glass. That's what Apple is doing. To me, it reminds me of like a melted ice cube. It's just so satisfying. But there is a setting you can enable if you don't like the transparent effect, you want it to be blurry in the background. And that's easy as simply just going into your settings on your main display, scroll down into accessibility, and go down to the display and text size, enable reduce transparency. So now if we exit out of here and we do the same thing, notice how the control center is no longer transparent and same applies for notifications as well, as well as the apps on these icons too. 
So cool little tool, you can reverse back in a way if you don't like the clear transparent. Now live translation is also a new thing that's available now on iPhones. So long as the iPhone supports Apple intelligence, you'll be able to also use live translations. And the way this works is if you receive a phone call and you go ahead and pick up, in the more option right down here, there is a new live translation beta. You go enabled and select the language that you want to translate. And in real time, it will start translating. Then other neat things that you could do on the phone app as well is live screening. So now if you ever get an unwanted call or a spam caller and you're not sure and you don't want to answer, you can just let AI take care of it. And then you can intervene if it's something important or not. In addition to that, whenever you're set on hold, your iPhone will actually hold your position and will automatically alert you when the hold time is gone. This way, if you're trying to get a hold of a business and they have a long hold time without no like automated way to hold your position in line, you can just allow your iPhone to be on standby while you continue using your phone. It'll notify you when it's your turn in line, all automatically. Now Safari also received some tweaks too. A lot of people don't know about this, but if you click on Safari, notice how our toolbar is back to the classic one. You can reverse it. You see, because it has been slightly redesigned, but you can reverse back to the classic icons for all your multitask, your bookmarks, your favorite and share and all that stuff. It's that easy as simply just going into your settings, going into our main page right here, starting fresh, go down until you find your apps right in here. And then just scroll down until you find S for Safari. Click on it, and on the very bottom, you'll see tabs. You can switch between the compact one, which is the Apple's newest version. They redesigned it, which looks like this, very minimum. It's hard to tell where everything is, but if you tap down here, it will appear. Or you can go back to the classic bottom one that was introduced to us on iOS 18. Or you can go back to the very classic one, which is my personal favorite. Layout's very easy to use, and it still features that minimalistic look because as you scroll down, it goes away, but then will completely fade back up. So that's how you go reverse back to the classic Safari. Now real quick, if you've been enjoying this video so far, if you could take two seconds to hit that like button and like, that would be truly appreciated. As that allows the channel to be continuing to be powered by you guys, the viewers, which is why you don't see brands taking like a segment, a minute or two off your time. It really does support the channel a lot that way. Thank you so much for those that hit that like button and like. Let's carry on. And then we also receive battery improvements too. Because if we charge our device and we lock our screen, on the top portion, it'll tell us how long it will take our iPhone to fully charge to 80%. So in like 20 minutes, depending on the power adapter you're using. And then in the very bottom over here, it also will tell you if your life on your AirPods are also low, like in our case right here, it'll actually tell us to charge ahead of time if we're going somewhere. And this could also notify you now if your hair pods are also fully charged. Very similar to like what the Apple Watch was able to do for quite a while now. Notify us when our device is full. Now the AirPods can do the exact same thing on your control center. But now we also have this new power mode as well. By going into your iPhone settings and we scroll down to the battery tab. It's been also redesigned over here where it actually will break down more things on what's using battery and such. But in the power mode, you have a new adaptive power. This is currently only available on some iPhone models. From my understanding, only the 16 Pros have this ability. But now we have this new adapted power, which allows your iPhone to make power adjustments to extend the battery life when operating your iPhone. So if you have apps running in the background that are just not doing anything, it'll basically shut them down or slow them down so it doesn't use that much resources from your battery. So the AirPods. AirPods 4 and the AirPods Pro 2 both receive new firmware updates as well. And we select it, I have a video playing in the background to make them connect, that's, what, that's what's happening if you're wondering. But if we go down, we have a remote control operation where you could single press or press one and hold to toggle a camera control. So if we launch the camera app right now, and I flip the camera, here's the little behind the scenes. If I pinch the earbud, a three second timer will start and it will capture a photo. You could do the exact same thing to capture video. And it works just like that. Additionally, back in the settings, if you scroll down even more further down, there's now a new pause media when falling asleep. Thanks to the built-in sensors that the AirPods have, if you're listening to like a podcast or watching a movie or something like that and you fall asleep, it will automatically pause the media. And AirPods 4, as well as the AirPods Pros 2, now can do studio recording as well, as not only the audio has been enhanced, but also the microphone quality. 
And then when it comes to listening to Apple Music, there's more reasons to use Apple Music than ever before because now there's new features added. One of the new features is the fact that whenever you play a song, I'm just going to play this random song. If we tap on the bottom over here, there's now a new icon which features audio mix. By having this enabled, it will utilize Apple intelligence to make a smooth transition from the next track. Very similar to like a DJ, how it matches the beat. Apple Intelligence can do that while listening to music, and this also works on Apple CarPlay as well. And after using it for quite a while now, it's a nice, pleasant feature. And speaking of Apple CarPlay, the Apple Car Music Play app on Apple CarPlay has been significantly improved, so much so that it literally feels like I'm navigating on my iPhone. So all the libraries, the categories you have available on the iPhone is also now available on CarPlay. And then when it comes to iMessage, you now have customized abilities. As you see, the wallpaper on this group chat has been changed. You can import your own, or you can have AI create some for you. By selecting the group chat, or the person you're talking to, photo icon on top, you'll see a category for backgrounds. From here, you can select none, or you can import your own. But if you look closely on Playground, you can use Apple Intelligence to create some custom ones as well and just describe what you like to see and it will create it. And then if you're a user who uses the podcast app, you now have a new tool when listening to podcasts. Right here, you could adjust the speed as well as use AI to adjust the clarity and vocals. So if we hit the speed rate, like 1.2 or two, and if it's too fast that like it's hard to listen, you can always select enhance dialogue and it'll utilize AI to make it easy for you to listen to when you're listening to something that quick and that sped up. You can also save the preference as well for the different podcasts you're listening to. And then if you use the back tap, if you watched on my previous video, you know, by back tapping stuff, a little window will pop up. That also has been redesigned and it looks more elegant. And lastly, there's rumors that Apple CarPlay will now be able to support YouTube finally, YouTube streaming. So long as the vehicle is parked, you could watch YouTube videos in your car while you're waiting for your your partner or somebody to get back in the car, making those long, awkward waits in the parking lot less awkward and allowing you to be more alert on what's going on versus you looking down on your phone and not knowing what's what's around you, you know? And of course we got widgets finally on Apple CarPlay that now support third-party apps as well. But there you guys have it. That is the quick rundown of my top 25 favorite hidden features and some cool things you could do on iOS 26 on the developer profile. If you'd like to watch more, if you own an Apple TV, I cover the latest Apple TV update right in that video over there. And I go in greater detail on what Apple CarPlay has to offer on iOS 26 as well. Thank you so much for watching.